Hi everyone. In this video, we'll be walking through Packet Tracer Assignment 6.2.4, Configuring Ether Channel. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Version 7 Cisco Network and Academy Curriculum. Now, in this lab assignment, what we're going to do is take these links that we have and instead of using them for redundancy for multiple paths to a destination, we're going to aggregate them together, combine them together to multiply their powers, if you will. So here between switch three and it's kind of hard to do it at an angle here, switch three and switch one, these ports FA0 21 to 21, FA0 22 to 22, we're going to create a, what's called an ether channel or a port channel or a channel group. All those kind of are interchangeable. And this particular protocol, there's one or two protocols you can use for Ether channels, either PAGP. Remember, PAGP is Cisco proprietary. LACP, which you're going to use for these other ones between switch one and switch two and switch two and switch three. LACP is more um, open ended, open source, so it doesn't have to be. Cisco device to Cisco device that was mainly created to go from a Cisco switch if you were plugged into a server that had multiple uh, internet ports, ethernet ports that you can combine together. So what happens is you do want them to be the same speed, so G or gigabit to gigabit ports um, or fast ethernet to fast ethernet. So if a gigabit port <clears throat> is combined with another gigabit port, right, and you've got two of them together, instead of one gigabit per second, they'll operate at two gigabits per second. On the other one, fast Ethernet, two fast Ethernet ports operating at 100 megabits per second will combine together to be 200 megabits per second. So you can combine up to eight redundant links in together. So you can get up to eight gigabits per second or 800 megabits per second, depending on if you're doing gigabit or fast Ethernet. But it does have to be gigabit to gigabit or fast Ethernet to fast Ethernet. The other thing is we do try to keep it as simple as possible. So we're going from FA021 to FA021 or FA022 to FA022 or G01 to G01 or G02 to G02 and so on and so on. However, you technically don't have to keep the port names the same on each end, just as long as they're the same speed. But we do do that to keep it as simple as possible, right, when we're configuring this stuff. So first thing we're going to do is configure uh, ether channel number one here, okay? Um, and that's between switch one and switch three. So I'm gonna go to switch one and none of the devices are actually named, so I'm gonna name them first. So I'm gonna do enable config T and name this one S1. Because we'll have a lot of stuff open in a minute. So again, we're configuring between S1 and S3, and the ports are 21 and 22, FA021 and 22. So we'll do the interface range command here because, again, we want to combine them and do all the same commands together. The first thing you do, though, is shut these down. So you always want to shut them down so you can configure them and then bring them back up. So the, both of those are shut down now. Then we'll use the channel group, channel dash group, and then you number it. We're going to do this one as one. And then mode, and I'm going to put a question mark here so we can see all the different modes. For PAGP, which this one is using, we want to type in desirable. What that'll do is force it to use PAGP. Now, again, both ends must be the same speed, but they most, must also be in the same mode. So both ends should, should use desirable now that we're going to do this. And you see it says creating it. Then we're going to do no shut to turn this back on. Okay. Now, while we're here, I like to go ahead and put it in the correct mode here. So interface port channel one. Again, going off the same number we just did and switch port mode trunk. We're going to put that in trunking mode. So as a summary here, we do the we go into the interface range. We're going to have a range because we want to do more than one port. Right. You can do up to eight. We're doing two here. We're going to shut them down momentarily. Then we're going to put them in the correct mode and number the channel group. Here we're using PAGP, so we did desirable. You don't really have to memorize these if you can remember this far and get to your question mark. Then we're going to turn them back on with no shut. And then we do the interface port channel, whatever number we just did, and we put it in trunking mode. So let's see if we can replicate that on switch three. Again, we're going to start by naming it here. <clears throat> okay. 
All right, we're going to do the same ports again. It doesn't technically have to be, but they're plugged into each other. So we want to use the ones that they are using here, which is 21 and 22. We're going to do shut down, actually, to turn them off momentarily. And then we are going to um, do the channel group. Again, put them in the same group. Even if it's on the other switch, it's got to be in the same group and the same mode, which is desirable here. See, it says creating. And then we're going to do no shut to turn them back on. Make sure you turn them back on. Okay, I'm going to exit out. Then I'm going to do interface port channel one because now those two ports are identified as one. So they are called port channel one now. That's why it's an interface port channel one. And we're going to do switch port mode trunk to put them in trunking mode. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to fast forward this. Click this fast forward button a little bit. And the reason why is because I want them to kind of negotiate and everything. I'm going to do a do show ether channel summary to show you guys what it looks like now. And there's a little legend up here to read or a key. All right. So S and U means is opera. S means is operating in layer two. And you see that up here, which is switching mode. And U means up. So that is a good sign. It's in use. Uh, P says it's in port channel so that is good and it's using pagp so we are golden here if you checked it on the other end on switch one again do ether and the only reason i'm doing do here so i don't have to back out uh oh show forgot the show command you see the same thing so we are good to go there ports that's involved in and everything you could also do a do show ether channel port channel and what that'll do is show you everything about group one that's grouped together the name of it port channel one desirable modes uh all the ports that are in there the protocol security that may be enabled everything so those that port channel one is good to go now we're going to kind of replicate similar commands. It's pretty much almost the same, except the mode is different on port channel two here. We want to configure that using LACP. Remember, LACP is the more open source one where it doesn't have to be a Cisco to Cisco device. So here we're going to do interface range G01 and two. OK, then we're going to do channel group two. We're going to name this one two. And again, our mode here is going to be active because we want to use LACP. You says, see that says use LACP unconditionally. That means no matter what. Okay. The next thing, and again, I forgot to shut it down, but you don't necessarily have to shut it down. Um, you see it kind of turns up. It's just good practice, um, but always make sure you leave it up or not shut down before you leave out of here. So if you do shut it down, make sure you type no shut. All right, then we're going to do interface port channel two and switch port mode trunk to put that in trunking mode. Now, the other end of this happens to be switch two here. Now, I have not configured the host name for S2 yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Enable config T host name S2. All right, so interface range G01 through 2, channel group 2, mode active. All right, and then exit. And then interface port channel 2, switch port mode trunk. All right. So again, we're using the similar commands here interface range, different set of ports, G01 through 2 channel group two mode active so that's going to be an lacp and then interface port channel two put them in trunking mode and again i'm going to use this fast forward button a little bit here and then i'm going to go check them do show ether channel summary all right so you see where su which is good it's in use it operating on layer two lacp is the mode and g01 and g02 are being uh, combined together so that is good it's in use and if we go to s1 and do the same thing do show ether channel summary we see the same thing which is good and you still see port channel one there as well 
So for port channel three, we're going to use LACP, but we're going to do active and passive, a mix of both. So I hate the way they laid this out, but switch two will use passive mode and switch three is going to use active mode. Passive will wait to see if the other end is in uh, LACP mode and then it will operate functionally if necessary. If not, then the uh, switch three um if it wasn't in active mode then it would not but active mode is unconditionally lacp so for switch two we are going to do the interface range and this is fa0 23 through 24 and we are going to shut them down first all right then we're going to do um channel group three mode and then on the switch two's end we're going to do passive Okay, and again, if you kind of look at that command, the passive mode again enables LACP only if it's detected. Uh, then we're going to do no shut to turn them back on, and then interface port channel three, switch port mode trunk. All right. Then on the other side, on switch three. We're going to do the same ports, interface range, FA0 23 through 24, shut down, channel group 3, mode active for this end, okay, then no shut, and you see it come up, and then we're going to do interface port channel 3, switch port mode trunk. All right, to make them in trunking mode. And if you do a do show ether channel summary, but first let's fast forward it a couple, a little bit there. Now we see they are active for port channel three with LACP, even if one mode is active and the other is passive. Now we have one last thing to do, and that deals with STP. Because of our redundancy in our links, spanning tree is going to try to close certain ports because it doesn't want these endless switching loops. Because even though we have reduced this down to technically operating as one link here, one link here, and one link here between switch one, two, and three. So you got one link between switch one and switch two logically, one link between switch one and switch three logically, and one link between switch two and switch three logically. Even though it's doing that, we still have multiple paths to a destination. So because of that, we could have switching loops and some ports may need to be closed and it will kind of prevent ether channel from operating at its fullest capacity. So if you notice here, it says port channel two is not operative because spanning tree placed some ports in the blocking mode. Unfortunately, these ports were the gigabit ports and they are the fastest ones. So we can restore that by making S1 the primary. And remember from uh, module five, we learned about how spanning tree operates and whoever's the root bridge will um, take primary control. So by doing that, if we do spanning tree VLAN one root primary or spanning tree VLAN one primary uh, priority and change the number just lower than all the rest of them, then we will, uh, what do you call it? Um, influence the election process. So we're going to go to switch one here. And again, we're going to do spanning tree. All right. VLAN one root. And I'm just going to use primary again. That will force it no matter what the priority number is. If you do the priority number, you just got to make sure it is lower than all the rest of them. Okay. So when I do that, it's going to unblock if I Fast forward, it's going to make some spanning tree recalculations. And now these two gigabits are open before they were blocked. Now you see this one is blocked here. So that it doesn't create this endless loop um, and eat up all your resources and eventually shut down your network. 